what is a particle? Does anybody know? You know, I've been uh, searching for this uh, thing called particle, quantum particle. Okay, we're going to talk about quantum particle, by the way, okay? And maybe that's where we should start. Here we have uh, the notion that laymen have about what particles are, okay? And I guess they extrapolate them, or most of them apparently extrapolate them to quantum mechanics. And it's the classical particle. And what is that? Well, it's a grain of sand, a seed, a speck of dust, tiny ball, corpuscle. That's what we used to call them, right? And right now, quantum particle, the answer you get from the PhDs, the Nobel Prize winners, and all these other good people, we don't know. So please don't ask. And you say, Bill, you're kidding me. <laughs> No, no, I'm not kidding you. I'm going to prove that to you today. I'm going to show you some evidence, okay? Evidence proof, okay? I'm going to show you today that that's exactly what the PhDs are telling you. Please don't ask because we have no clue whatsoever. You say, well, holy, a particle is a particle. I mean, we represent it in, in the old days, right? In classical uh, physics, meaning anything below 19th, 19th century and below, right? And that was the dot, the ball, the spot, you know, uh, point. You would hit the uh, board with your chalk. You make a little white dot and say, that's a point. And what is that? That's a particle. And everybody would understand. You could explain your theory by saying, look, that dot now moves over here, moves over there, and I can explain this motion that motion. That's more or less how it went. And it turns out that quantum explains it the same way, except that they tell you that they don't know what it is. No longer do they say it's a grain of sand or a tiny ball. In fact, they specifically tell you in your face, it ain't. It's not one of those. So don't insist. We don't know. <laughs> okay? That's the answer you get today. And so we say, well, holy, how difficult can this be? Uh, so let's look it up first to see if there's some kind of definition out there, you know, for what a particle is. Here's one definition. It comes from a uh, source, a uh, trusted source, right? DAMS, Glossary of Meteorology. An aggregation of sufficiently many atoms or molecules that it can be assigned macroscopic pro uh, properties such as volume, density, pressure, and temperature. Now, how's that for for an answer? So it's a bunch of particles, right? Forms, I guess, a ball. Uh, this this is what I illustrated. Maybe it's a cube. I don't know. But I illustrated that as a ball, and a particle is just a bunch of particles. Okay, that's what it is. <laughs> okay, okay. Did you understand? Particle is a bunch of particles. Okay, that's great. Okay, let's see if we have any other uh, version here. We have the Wikipedia. As always, we should use uh, primary sources that uh, all these PhDs put their two cents worth in there, and then they later disclaim and say, well, don't trust the Wikipedia because it's got all these terrible definitions. Turns out that all those are made by PhDs, especially in the world of so-called physics, mathematical physics. Okay, so this is what you find in the physical science, a particle or corpuscle. Corpuscle is a particle? I thought it wasn't. In older texts, is a small localized object. Uh -huh. So they're saying that the so-called particle is a small corpuscle or object. Okay, so keep that in mind. Okay, this is what the encyclopedia tells you. Okay, to which can be ascribed you know several properties. Great. Okay, and so you look uh, up this and you uh, look up, for example, elementary fundamental particle and it says one that is not made of components. So it's, I guess, made of a single piece, okay? Uh, well, keep that in mind as well, okay? But then you look at, uh, you know, what do they mean by object? It says localized object, a collection of matter. What is matter? Any substance that has mass, takes up space. Okay, great. What is a substance? It's matter. <laughs> Anything that has mass and takes up space, okay? What is a chemical substance? A material, meaning matter. What is mass? Quantity of matter. What is space? Well, we still have no idea today at mathematical physics, right? Has no idea. So we don't learn much with these definitions because they use the word object and they use the, maybe they might use the word entity, right, to uh, depict or define the particle. And no, they're wrong. It's, it's not an object. We'll see that today, okay? Not a thing. And that's why they tell you that they don't know what it is, okay? Here we have an article. Uh, it was uh, from uh, 2020, I think it is. Let me get this smaller. And it was from the Quantum Magazine, and these people, give me a second here, these people uh, say that, uh, ask the question, what is a particle? And they didn't just ask it, they decided to ask all the so-called physicists, mathematical physicists, okay? And give me one more second here. Jeez. Okay, and it says, what are particles? The easy answer quickly shows itself to be unsatisfying. 
what a bad way to start your <laughs> presentation. It says, uh, I'm not going to be able to tell you. Yeah. Okay, electrons, photons, quarks, and other fundamental particles supposedly lack substructure or physical extent. So it's an object that has no shape, no, no size, no diameter, no radius, no nothing. There's nothing there. You can't illustrate this so-called particle and none of these electrons, photons, quarks, because they have no size. What are you going to put in there? You can't put a dot and say, well, assume this is the electron. You know, I can't make that assumption because you just told me it has no size. Why did you put a dot? You put a heart to represent love. You put a dot to represent point. Well, if you do, you're making a big error. <laughs> okay. Okay. And yet particles have distinct traits such as charge and mass. How can a dimensionless point, right, bear weight? Yeah, good question. So uh, this lady decided to investigate this uh, issue and ask all the, uh, let me see if I can get this out, uh, ask all these um, PhDs, uh, high level PhDs in uh, so-called mathematical physics, what is a particle? I mean, if they don't know, who does, right? Okay, so here are the answers she got. Okay, she went to different places. You'll see who the authors of these answers were. Okay, here we have them. First one, we basically think of a particle as a point-like object. Again, said the same thing as before. Okay, is that what a particle is? Okay, let's use it. What's the problem? If it's a point-like object, meaning, you know, it's got shape because it's an object, it's got size, it's got dimensions, it's got all these good things, uh, why uh, were they saying that it has none? You know, and then it says, well, we think of it as elementary particles. Again, one that is not broken up into simpler parts, right? Instead, might be vibrating strings. So we have an elementary particle, which is not made of anything, which has no size, no dimensions, right? And, uh, but that's a vibrating string, whatever string is. And what is a string made of? Well, it's made out of particles because the string is not a string. It's a line. It's a curved line. What is a line? It's made out of dots, points. Uh, what do you call them? Geometry points? Locations. Positions, as the mathematicians call it. That's what, what a string is. A string is not a physical entity. It's a mathematical uh, contraption. I can't even call it a contraption because that word is wrong there as well. No, it's just a... Uh, it's a mathematical abstraction that would be better to say it's a line and a line of geometry a line of mathematics is made out of points which are locations positions right and uh means that we're not talking about things we're talking about uh dots that represent concepts okay so we are reifying the string and they say that the string when it vibrates is a particle so a particle is not a standalone thing. You can't take a snapshot of a particle because the string has to vibrate it in order to make up the particle. All kinds of errors with that uh, statement there. Okay, and that was by Mary Gaylord, uh, particle theorist at UC Berkeley. Okay, that was the first one. Let's see if we have any more. We have another volunteer here. <laughs> Her name is Helen Quinn, and she's an emeritus professor at Stanford. She says the following. She says, what is a particle from a physicist's point of view? It's a quantum excitation of a field. Okay, so it turns out that the particle is something in motion. That's what makes up the particle. They call that something a field. So we have a field, it vibrates, and as long as it's vibrating, we have a particle. So a particle is not a standalone, you can't take a snapshot of a particle because you, get, you have to wait for the field to vibrate. There's got to be a verb in there, you know. And so uh, you need two frames of the universal movie to make a particle, which is kind of weird, you know. And uh, we look up the word uh, field, and it's a quantity represented by a number that has value for each point in space and sp uh, sp uh, point in space and time. So again, we're, we're talking about a, a number. The number vibrates, and as long as the number vibrates, we have a particle. If the number stops vibrating, I guess it's the number five, could be, could be the number seven. So if the number seven stops vibrating, we no longer have uh, a particle. You figure it out. It says, in that, there are a bunch of different fields. Each field has different properties and excitations. They are different depending on the properties. Those excitations we can think of as a particle. That was her answer. PhD, what, emeritus? Uh, okay, uh, these, are, these are the teachers that you're paying for in, in some of these schools because a lot of them are government supported. Okay, here's a Nobel Prize winner. I mean, you got to pay attention now for sure, okay? Because the other two, they, they were not Nobel Prize. It's just a petty emeritus and uh, so-called physics teacher. This one's a Nobel Prize. Shelley Glashow, okay? Particles are at a very minimum described by irreducible representations of the Poincaré 
group. Okay, the representation is not the particle. Uh huh. The representation is a way of describing certain properties of the particle. Okay, so we're talking about descriptions of a particle. I wanted to know what a particle is that you could point to it and say that's a particle. I guess you can't do that. And let us not confuse the two. Yeah, here you have a PhD uh, who got his uh, Nobel Prize in quantum mechanics for coming up with some little idea in quantum mechanics, and he can't tell you what a particle is. And quantum mechanics is a particle theory. You know, it's got the standard model of particles. And this fellow, he cannot tell you what a particle is. But he, he was given a Nobel Prize by his buddies, right? Makes you stop and think, right? Your Nobel Prize doesn't know what a particle is. How difficult can it be? It used to be the famous corpuscle that, you know, Newton had in the back of his mind and all these other people all the way to the 19th century. They thought of it as a little dot, a little uh, ball, a little seed, a little grain of sand. We all understood that, but now, you know, they're talking about what, fields, vibrating fields, vibrating numbers. That's what a particle is. And then they take it back and say, we don't know what it is. What did you just say? You said it's a vibrating field. Now you say, well, we don't know what it is. <laughs> okay. So it's getting better and better every moment. Here's another uh, testimony. Take these people to court, right? Uh, Dimitri Nanopoulos, particle physicist at Texas A&M, okay, Aggies. Uh, if you zoomed in enough on particles, you would see not points, but one-dimensional vibrating strings. Again, another string theorist here. What is this thing? I mean, God is better than this. <laughs> You're telling me. Particles are what we measure in detectors. At the moment that I detect it, it collapses the wave and becomes a particle. The particle is the collapsed wave function. The collapsed wave function. What in the world is that? Let's see if I, I think I have it here. Uh... No, I don't. <laughs> okay, I'll have to skip that one. But uh, the point is, it's a wave function collapse. So uh, here we have a field uh, that vibrates, and that's what a particle is. Here they say it's the collapse of the wave function. Function is an equation. That's a, you know, it's a, it's a formula, <laughs> a mathematical equation. And they're saying this thing is going to collapse. So I, I can't imagine how a wave function can collapse. What sense does that make? What meaning can that have? Okay, I don't have any answers for you there. Anyways, uh, here's another testimony. Another witness comes to court and says the following. It says, uh, particles are what we measure in detectors. We start slipping into language of saying that it's the quantum fields that are real and particles are excitations. Okay, that's how they present it to you, right? We, uh, we talk about virtual particles. Yeah, whatever those are. Virtual means that they come out of the magic wand of the uh, magician, math magician, but it doesn't go click, click, click in anyone's detector. Okay, yeah, I mean, you have all these so called particles, uh, virtual particles, the elementary particles, and uh, what they say is we don't know what it is, but as long as they go tick, tick, tick on the detector, then we call it a particle. And some of them, you know, come in from the void because we have to make them up, you know, uh, you figure out. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And here you have another fellow. He just says, shut your mouth. Don't, don't ask. Okay? Don't ask, don't tell. Okay? We say they are fundamental, but that's just a way of, to say to students, don't ask. I don't know the answer. <laughs> it's fundamental. Don't ask anymore. Okay? At least that was a more honest answer, I think, you know, than all these people who claim to know what a particle is. You know, and they say it's a vibrating field. It's a wave function collapse. And these people say, look, don't ask. We have no clue. And uh, here's another fellow from MIT, uh, says, at the end of the day, quantum gravity has some uh, mathematical structure and we're all uh, chipping away at it. Good. If it's got structure, fine. But mathematical structure, that's like saying it's an abstract structure, abstract physicality. <laughs> like uh, that's an oxymoron, you know, mathematical structure. A quantum theory of gravity and space time will ultimately be needed to answer the question. What are the fundamental building blocks of the universe on its most fundamental scales? A more sophisticated phrasing of the question, what is a particle? Yeah, but see, they never ask that question in mathematics because they have no use for objects. All they have use for is equations and numbers and measurements and values, quantities. So yeah, it ends the presentation saying, we don't have, uh, we don't know is the short answer. They don't know. So please do not ask that question of a mathematical physicist. Okay? They have no clue. Okay? So when they tell you, look, it's a wave function collapse, it's a vibrating field, 
say, okay, but what is it? Can you draw it for me? Can you point to it? And hopefully the, the guy in front of you will not say, please don't ask me again. <laughs> okay, so here are the conclusions, folks. We have uh, not a single mathematician on earth can tell you what a quantum particle is. I mean, is it a physical object or not? If it's zero dimensional point or whatever, however they want to describe it, we have a nothing in front of us. So you can't say at the same time that it's also a vibrating field and also the wave function collapse. You can't have all these versions. The correct answer is they don't know. Please don't ask again. Okay, that's the answer. So a quantum particle is not a tiny ball. A quantum particle is a location with a value. That's what the mathematicians deal with. So quantum mechanics does not have particles, meaning corpuscles, you know, tiny balls. Okay? It is universally designated, represented with a dot. Everybody puts a dot, chalk on the board, pencil on a paper, you know, et cetera. And it's just a dot. And that dot is a, is a physical entity. You see it's two-dimensional at least. And you look at it and say, okay, is that what a particle is? Okay, I see it's just a tiny ball. That's not what you're staring at. They, they already fooled you. They put a thing to represent a concept, and you didn't catch it. Okay? So the word particle and a pictorial dot mislead laymen into thinking that the quantum particle is a thing. It ain't. Okay? Uh, quantum does not deal with things. Okay? So it cannot describe or explain, especially the, uh, the universe in which we live, especially the submicron, uh, subatomic world, okay? atomic and subatomic world. This is not a quantum particle, okay? So anyone who tells you differently, uh, he's lying, okay? So don't believe him. And so here's the standard model of uh, quantum mechanics, okay? And what do you see there? Well, you see all these so-called particles. They call them particles, elementary particles, particles made of a single piece, in other words, that are not made of uh, smaller uh, components. And it's interesting that they haven't found the graviton. They've been searching for that one for ages, okay? They haven't found the graviton. And that's the particle of gravity. They will never find it because you cannot explain pull with gravitons. It also is, even if they did find it, it's uh, inconsistent or incompatible with uh, general relativity, which talks about extended fields and uh, canvases, I guess you could call them. So, yeah, none of those are particles uh, in the sense of uh, how we imagine a particle, a little tiny speck of dust. In fact, you can see that there are no pictures of any of the so-called particles. And they have little drawings with a little H on top or a little C or whatever on top of them. And that's what they consider a particle. Uh, they have no idea, in other words. They're going to talk about traces. And they're going to talk about um, wave functions. And they're going to talk about fields. And those are not defined either, at least in any physical sense. So you will never know, you will never understand what a particle is in quantum. And so the particle model, in fact, they should use a different word. They should call it the collapse or the vibrating field or whatever, instead of calling it a particle. Particle is a misleading word, okay? and it's just there to fool you.